When a professor has a child with his beautiful student, he ends up facing a series of mishaps that worsen when he also falls for his lover's sister. As a kid, Richard admired his father, Gordon, who had a string of lovers and taught romance literature in Cambridge. He used to attend his father's lecture, hearing about poets who defied authority which Gordon believed was what romance was about. Decades later, Richard takes his father's place in the same class and mimics the man's romanticized views, earning the admiration of one of his students, Kate. Soon enough, Kate becomes his lover and insists on introducing him to her father. On that evening, Richard arrives at the restaurant to meet with Kate when he overhears a woman named Olivia arguing with someone on the phone. The woman accidentally breaks her heels and drops her phone into the drain, but she refuses the doorman's offer to recover it as she's happy to end her conversation. Later, Olivia coincidentally sits next to Richard at the bar while he waits for Kate. He wonders if she'll recover her phone, but the woman declares that she's cutting herself off from the world so she doesn't need it. Richard thinks isolating herself will be lonely, so he advises her to get along with everyone. She challenges this idea by pointing out that he's also alone, and Richard jokes that he just wants to accompany her. Sliding closer to her, the professor starts flirting with the alluring woman. As things start to get interesting between them, Kate finally arrives and hugs Olivia, who turns out to be her sister. Kate then kisses the professor, letting Olivia know that the man she'd been flirting with is the boyfriend she was introducing to them that evening. With their father canceling on them, Richard is left alone with the sisters. He discovers that their father led a double life and raised two separate families, so the half-sisters made a pact to never hide anything from each other. Pointedly looking at Richard, Olivia stresses how she and Kate tell each other everything. Just then, Kate brings up Olivia's boyfriend Alan who's a famous romance writer. She also happens to be the man's editor, which Kate finds romantic. While Richard teasingly admires this as well, Olivia hints back that a professor being passionate about his students is more romantic. This earns her a stern look from her sister. Richard then offers the lady some of his steak, though Olivia takes this as an innuendo. Pissed, she criticizes the professor for targeting her sister, who's probably dating him to solve her issues with their father. Offended, Kate points out that Olivia eloped with a guy when she was younger, but her sister defends that she thought she was pregnant then. To everyone else's surprise, Kate declares that she's actually pregnant right now. Hearing this, Richard excuses himself to get some fresh air. His girlfriend runs to him, scared that he's freaking out about the news. She offers to let him off the hook if he doesn't want to be a father since she's moving back to America anyway. Despite the surprises, Richard hints at his support, so Kate kisses him and assures him that he'll make a great father. Feeling lost, the professor soon visits his father Gordon and his new wife Joan to seek advice. Richard wonders why Gordon married his mother despite his player status, and the man justifies that the woman served him both at home and in bed, so it was good enough for him. However, his son wants more than that. Gordon realizes that his son is considering settling down with Kate, which he strongly advises against. However, Richard decides not to be like his irate father and chooses to be with Kate. With that, the two get married, move to Los Angeles, and soon welcome their son. Despite having a seemingly idyllic life, however, Richard discovers that his American students aren't as interested in romantic literature as his class from Cambridge. Seeing his frustration over this, his colleague Angela urges him to apply to a better university. Instead, Richard continues his less-than-stellar career to appreciate more time with his family. Years later, he takes his son Jake to lunch when the boy spots Kate getting into a vehicle with another man. Oblivious to this, Richard calls his wife to assure his son that she is at work, but she panics, so she tells her companion, Brian, to pull over as she takes the call. Despite getting off the hook, the woman worries that her secret might come out soon. That evening, Olivia calls the couple's home but gets Richard instead of her sister. Still, she happily announces that she is engaged to her boyfriend, Alan, with whom she's also moving in. Before Richard can process the news, Kate returns home and confesses that she's fallen in love with someone else. She defends that their relationship started when she was still a starry-eyed student working through her daddy issues. As she explains herself, Richard paces the room in shock. Though when she reveals that she is with Brian now, he gets pissed, seeing the man as nothing but her foolish co-worker. The professor then asserts that Kate can leave him, but he won't be abandoning Jake. With this, he moves into the pool house behind Kate's home. This way, he can still be close to his son while keeping watch of his soon-to-be ex-wife and her new relationship. With the new arrangements, Richard soon reverts to entertaining his beautiful students. One day, Professor Piggott from the University of Los Angeles visits Richard to invite him to a soiree tomorrow. He hints that meeting people there might improve his chances of getting a spot at their university, so Richard promises to be there. Meanwhile, Olivia visits her gynecologist to improve her chances of having a baby with Alan. Later that day, however, she finds her fiancé in bed with her gynecologist. Elsewhere, Richard plays with his son when Brian visits. The other man tries teaching Jake how to use a baseball bat, and the jealous father gets distracted and misses the ball, which hits him in the face. While Richard tends to his bruise later, Brian visits him to deliver his letter from the immigration office. This reveals that Richard has missed his appointments, and if he doesn't attend one with his wife, he can get deported. The following day, the man visits the dentist's office for his broken tooth from the incident. 
Despite being told not to drink liquor while on medication, he enjoyed some alcohol during the soiree that evening. Piggott uses the chance to introduce Richard to his colleagues, but as the conversation continues, the professor quickly becomes dazed due to his medicine side effects. Because of this, he leaves the party early and drives home. Given his condition, however, he gets arrested for driving under the influence. Kate ends up having to bail him out the next day. His stunt last night has convinced his ex-lover that he's not responsible enough to care for their son while she and Brian are out of town, so Kate calls up her sister to help. As Olivia unpacks, she announces her breakup with Alan, and the bitter Richard compares her experience to what Kate did to him. This drives Kate to rant about how, despite wanting to be with his son, Richard's been ignoring the calls from his immigration officer. She asserts that if he wants her to pretend that they're still happily married so he can stay in this country, he has to behave. With this in mind, Richard meets up with his lawyer Ernesto who stresses that he and Kate must attend their interview on Monday. To prepare, the man checks on how the professor's life has been, only to find that he was recently arrested for driving under the influence. This won't look good on his record, so Ernesto signs him up for a recovery program. That afternoon, the professor sees Olivia struggling to drive off in Brian's Hummer to pick up his son. Richard offers his car but insists on joining her. During the drive, Olivia goes on a rant about how men easily move on from one woman to another. This leads to the two making fun of each other's intimate life, which ends with Olivia loudly rambling about bedroom noises in front of her nephew's teachers. After picking Jacob up from school, Richard heads to his first recovery meeting along with another new member, Cindy. However, he refuses to admit that he has a drinking problem. The man continues his downward spiral in class when his students ignore him, clearly just attending his class because they're required to. Meanwhile, Olivia meets with her publisher Tim as she is trying to be a writer. He admires her work, though he comments on how she needs to make her writing more salacious. On another day at the recovery program, Richard gets a call from Ernesto who warns him that the immigration office has assigned an agent to watch him. Just then, he sees a man talking to the program's leader, making him think that he's the agent. Desperate, Richard starts pretending to be supportive of his companions and even declares his love for his life and respect for the country. He also admits to having a problem, all to appease the agent. Just then, Olivia calls him as Jake has woken up from a nightmare. With this, the man hurries home to be with his son. Olivia watches as Richard tenderly calms Jake and tucks him back to bed. Once Jake's asleep, Richard joins Olivia in the kitchen, who shares her admiration at how good he is with his son. Hearing this, Richard comments how women tend to love him at first and then hate him afterward. Olivia seems to be the opposite. The woman clarifies that she hated him initially but now she just hates him occasionally. Their eyes meet as she says this, sparking something between them. Late that evening, Richard looks over to Olivia's bedroom window, seeing her using his calming method for Jake on herself. This finally convinces her to remove the engagement ring she got from Alan. The following day, the two send off Jake to a sleepover, letting them have the house to themselves. Suddenly drawn to his ex's sister, Richard checks in on her, only to find Tim coming out from the shower. Thinking that Olivia is already sleeping with her publisher, Richard walks off. After the man leaves that evening, the professor bitterly teases Olivia about her time with her publisher. However, the woman defends that nothing happened. They were just working on her novel, and Tim went surfing in the nearby ocean so he had to take a shower afterward. Disappointed, Richard invites Olivia over for some wine. This allows the woman to rant about how her publisher scrutinized her work, making her sympathize with how she used to criticize Alan's novels. The professor admits that he always thought her ex's books were awful, though he adds that he thought of Olivia whenever he read his books. He also compliments her, assuring her that she's better off without her ex. Tension rises between them, and soon, the two give in to their desires. The new couple wakes up in the morning, only to hear that Kate and Brian are back early. Panicked, Olivia rushes to the main house without her clothes but sees her sister already at the front door. With no choice, Olivia jumps into the pool, pretending that she was just out to swim. Troubled about what he'd done, Richard later confides to Angela that he slept with his sister-in-law. His colleagues are appalled by this, knowing that Kate would freak out and let him get deported over this. The professor is confident that she won't find out, but Angela reminds him how close the sisters are so they'll likely talk about it. Realizing this, Richard runs back home and checks in on Kate. Immediately, his ex tells him that she talked to Olivia, but her sister only shared how great he was with their son. This makes Kate feel guilty over how she's been acting around him, so she hints at making amends with her ex. The man then hurries to speak with Olivia, who's considering telling her sister the truth. Just in time, Gordon appears to visit his son, distracting the two from their issue. With their new guest, the family goes to the beach later, allowing Richard to beg Olivia to wait until after his appointment with the immigration office to tell her sister what happened. Knowing that he's at risk of being deported, Olivia relents. Throughout the day, Gordon bonds with his family in odd ways, including smoking some questionable substance with Brian. After this, Richard finally asks his father why he visited, so Gordon admits that Joan left him. Richard tries to sympathize with his father, but the older man just spouts insults at women. Fired of his behavior, the professor points out that Joan left Gordon because of his problematic views. 
He even blames him for teaching him to be a player when he actually wanted to be a decent man. With that, he tells the man to leave. In the morning, Richard wakes up to find that his father is gone, leaving behind a bag of illicit substances. He then continues the day with the last session of his recovery program. However, the leader refuses to sign his completion form as she doesn't think he's sincere about recovering. Frustrated, Richard rants to his fellow member Cindy as they leave. Out of pettiness, he invites her to drink at a pub and smoke the bag his father left for him, though he clarifies that he's just joking around. Adding to his frustrations, Piggott watches his lecture later while his class continues to ignore him. He tries out a lecture his father once taught about defying authority, but in that moment, he realizes how romanticized words are never truly enough. With this, he sympathizes with his students' struggle of attending a class to achieve a different goal. He stresses how past romance writers have nothing to give to today's youth. Instead, he admits that he should be teaching them to find their own voice and write their stories. This captures the student's attention. So despite his potential future employer watching, Richard tells them to seek what they genuinely want in life instead of listening to poets of the past. Much to his surprise, Piggott visits him at his house later that day. The man's actually impressed with his fresh outlook in literature, so he welcomes him into the University of Los Angeles. Related, he rushes to Olivia to tell her the good news. He even enthuses how great he feels about their relationship, unaware that Brian and Kate are in the next room. Overhearing this, Kate is heartbroken that Olivia kept their relationship from her. With that, she throws them both out of her house. This leaves Richard with no choice but to attend his immigration interview alone with Ernesto the next day. Adding to his ruined marriage and failed recovery program, they also discover that Cindy is the agent who's been tailing him. Given that he offered her to smoke some substances the other day, she doesn't recommend him staying in the country. With that, Richard says goodbye to his son before being forced out of the country. Soon, he's back in Cambridge, returning to the old job his father once had. Although he's more appreciated in the classroom, Richard finds his days dull without his family. Gordon eventually falls ill and is admitted to the hospital. His son visits him, allowing the older man to finally express his admiration for how Richard did everything to be a good father. Carefully, Richard disagrees, given that none of Kate's family are talking to him now. Having seen how happy Richard was, Gordon urges his son to fight for his family, hoping he doesn't grow old and miserable as he did. Hearing encouragement from his father for the first time, Richard makes amends with a man he's looked up to all his life. Days later, Gordon passes away. Richard continues to try to reconnect with Jake through video calls, but his son is mad at him for leaving. He also learns from Brian that the sisters are still not talking to each other, with Kate refusing to attend Olivia's book launch next week. As he finds ways to return to America, Richard sorts some documents and discovers Gordon's will. Seeing what he inherits from his father brightens his mood, so Richard quickly calls Ernesto to use the money to return to his family. Soon, Richard flies to Mexico and joins immigrants in crossing the border. After days of traveling, he makes it back to Kate's house and surprises Jake. However, Kate worries that immigration might find and arrest Richard. The man assures her that Ernesto will sort everything out, including his more permanent stay in America. He also apologizes for sleeping with her sister, stressing that he begged Olivia to keep it a secret until their meeting so he could stay with Jake. Seeing his devotion to their son, Kate forgives him. The following day, the group attends Olivia's book launch, surprising the woman. This allows Kate to reconcile with her sister while Richard confesses that he's fallen in love with Olivia. Late that afternoon, the professor and his family scattered Gordon's ashes by the beach where they last spent their good day with a man. However, Jake worries that his father will leave again. To assure him, Richard proposes to Olivia, noting that their marriage will allow him to stay in the country again. Immediately, Olivia says yes and the two embrace, excited to have their family complete again.